Mic check, mic check. This is Chelsea. And, and Tony. This is Tony. And you're watching Chelsea and Tony Live. And this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, online store, or portfolio like you'll see today. And Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. So you can try Squarespace by going to squarespace.com slash Tony. You can get a free trial for 14 days. No credit card needed. Isn't that neat? And uh, you can also get 10% off if you decide to buy it by using the coupon code PORTFOLIO. And please use it, because that lets Squarespace know that you heard about it from us, that we're great, that they should love us, and it makes the show possible. Yeah, thanks, Squarespace. We'll look at a couple of Squarespace portfolios today. If you have a Squarespace, por Squarespace portfolio and you're brave enough to send it in for our critical review, visit sdp.io slash link. Tell us what you think of Squarespace and give us a link, and we'll look at it. Maybe we'll look at it a little bit later. You have to be watching the live show. There are a couple of ways you can communicate with us during the live show. Justin, is Twitter up Telepathy. and Telepathy. Uh, Carrier pigeons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good with Twitter. OK. That's Justin, our producer. And if you use the hashtag TC Live, Justin can see it. Toss it up on the screen if he finds you entertaining. The other way to communicate is to write a comment during the live show on the YouTube page. You do that, Siobhan, over in Philly, might tell us, might ask us your question, or she might not. I'm going to give them some <laughs> tips on how to get through the Siobhan filter. She oh, okay. doesn't like some Siobhan, she doesn't like your questions because most of them are on our website, Northrop.photo, and we have a bunch of free gear information. So she's like, "Why don't you just go there?" And she likes funny stuff, but you don't always have to be funny. Yeah, sometimes it's more entertaining if it's not gear just related. be entertaining. A lot of the times, the question, the answer to a gear question is like, I don't know. It'd be <laughs> like, "Hey, which do you do you like the uh, Tamron 18 to 300 that was released in 1996?" Like. I don't know. Well, we've used a lot of gear, and but not and that's why we've we've organized it on our website so that it's easier for you to access, and so that we can answer a lot of people's questions at once. Makes it easier for everybody. This week. This is amazing. The, what's amazing? They can take a picture from their computer, send it across space and time, and it will land on my computer where we can look at it instantly. Holy crap! Is this the future? Yes, instant is photo reviews. Is this the reviews. future? <laughs> if you took if you've taken street photography pictures. Visit northrop.photo slash submit. Is it a picture of a street? No. Is it, it is, a, is it a picture of um, a, a bottle of a fine liqueur? We should clarify, because we hate it when we get off-topic photos. Street photography generally has people in it. The people, people are the subject. It's candid. It's candid, which means not somebody posing like that in Whoa, a street. Like, what do you mean like this? Like crisscross in the 90s? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no 90s poses are allowed okay. whatsoever. So, so this is a good example of street photography. He's candid. You. And you know what? It, it tells us a little bit about it. Street photography is often black and white because it kind of originated during that era when people were shooting black and white film. And street photographers, well, it was just cheaper mm. to do black mm. and white. Mm. Nowadays, we often cool. still desaturate it to black and white. So that's street photography. Go to northwood.photo slash submit if you want us to look at your photo. One photo per person. Giselle Dupree better be in the house tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I, I should have pulled up her portfolio. She has one of our one of our readers. Next our week, account. architecture. Is that your photo, Charles? Yeah. I like that photo. I don't Same think I've seen Chelsea. that. Same Yeah, so, so if you have an architect. Because I asked the question, then I never set it up. Well, they could write in the comments. But they could write it in the comments. Who, who, if you, sometimes you go shoot out shooting with people, and they end up being really annoying. Is it kids? Is it your grandma? Is it your friend Phil, who never stops talking about sports? Well, the, yeah, you don't have to, we don't know your friend Phil, but <laughs> there's that guy, when you take the picture, they, they look at it, and then they walk up, and they take the same photo. I call that the copycat. The copycat's really annoying. That happens, I know this happens to you guys, but I'll be on vacation, and I'll be carefully, like, framing a shot, and then someone with their phone will, like, look at me, and then, like, try to see what I'm looking at, and they'll be like, click, and walk away. And then there's the, the gear guy, and I think they hang out on DP Review too much, because they're always like... Oh, you have the D7200. Didn't you hear about the, the focusing problem that it has? Yeah, and it's and like, like... No, I never had a problem with that. <laughs> Did you hear about the, the D7300? Well, it's just the rumors, but... Just gear, 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 gear. You gear. need to do what I do in that situation.
situation and just just run just no, throw a smoke bomb and disappear like Batman. I just I just start up the old imagination and go somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> and throw it away. <laughs> Maybe we should come back to that. Yeah, we'll go back to that. We have a nice surprise for you guys. So stay tuned. I think you're gonna like it. Or hate yes, it. stay. I don't want to distract it's you guys give from you the feelings. video. Uh, tomorrow we're going to Canon Expo in New York City. I think it's an invite-only event. Just oh, yeah. We're so cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Cool, cool Canon You guys here. should be cool like us. Anyway, stay tuned because we'll have some, we'll take some video there. And I want to give an update on my 7200 repair. You might remember oh, from two like months ago. Two months ago. <laughs> Today is the two-month oh. anniversary. <laughs> KEH does still not have even an ETA for the repair of my lens. Wow. I wow. asked them. I said, just send it back. I've waited too much. Just give me my money back and give me my lens back, and I'll just find somebody else. Really? What'd they say? Uh, I don't know. They haven't. I don't think they replied yet. I haven't checked my email. Maybe they have. Dang! This is but a bad. I give up. This is bad two press. Months. Two months. Scoop. Follow shoot. up on scoop shoot. Scoop shot. Scoop. I can't All pronounce I can it either. All I can see is poop shoot. <laughs> I don't know why. Scoop shot. It's supposed to be Uber for photographers. That makes no sense. Uh, there's there's nothing going on there. Wait. Oh. I I signed up. Let's just let's just check this out. When you go to Scoop Shot, I still can't say it. Hire a professional Scoop photographer. Shot. And so <laughs> this is supposed to be like Uber, right? Yeah. Which is defined by being super easy. Yeah. What happens when you go here is it says find a pro based on location, genre, or name. This is it. There's no searching. You can't put in your location and find nearby photographers. It's just a big list of every single photographer that has signed up on one page. Okay. There is no search. Well, there's no browse. Let's not poo-poo on this anymore. Let's try something else. Go to PicSpotter. P-I-C-S-P-O-T-R. PicSpotter. Like that? Yes. This is brand new, and it's a business management tool for photographers. This is actually my friend is one of the brains behind this. I haven't had, I signed up, but I haven't had a chance to try it yet. You get six months free. Um, he asked me to help him out. So if you guys want to check it out, like it's, you know, it's a so far, but you might like it. It helps you manage your contacts. It helps you plan all of your shoots and do all of your billing and all that stuff. And um, it, it could be good for some of you. It's free right now, so you may as well get in while it's free. Okay. Completely familiar, entirely revolutionary. Some photography news Is that for a certain looking at pictures. Uh, yes, where have you been? <laughs> have you been disconnected from the internet? This is the Apple Pencil. Oh my God, I don't uh, care at all. <laughs> well, maybe you should because you love your uh, Wacom tablet, which you yeah. use for editing pictures like a pen. Could I do that on this? Uh, S no. Okay. But so soon <laughs> you could. What? Because soon don't mean nothing in my world. So in the Apple and us two products, the Apple iPad Pro, which is a large iPad, and then the Apple Pencil, which is a stylus that allows a great deal of control, and, and they can see it in the video here. So it's pressure sensitive. You can lay it down, and it does various calligraphy style effects. So it should be excellent for drawing. Uh, they've also partnered with Adobe who is currently creating a version of Photoshop that will run on the iPad. I don't know how, we'll see. So right now, if you wanted to do this, you could get uh, a Wacom Syntec, uh, which is basically an LCD screen that you can draw on. Um, but they're pretty expensive and, you know, uh, well, I guess they're actually cheaper than the iPad. But they require a separate computer, so you couldn't really bring it with you. And uh, I don't know. Overall, they just don't get great reviews. So I, I'm interested in it. I'm also interested in just having getting away from Mac OS and Windows. Yeah. It'll be really nice when we can do like photo editing and stuff on mobile devices. They just have more stable operating Might systems. Might be good to travel with. Anyway, I just want to throw it out there. I think, uh, well, it's available in November, so they kind of announce it a little bit earlier. I know that Apple. it's like against the grain a little bit and people might be mad, but I never get excited about a product until it has good reviews. I just can't get into that whole like hype thing. Right. And yeah. I've never understood standing in line for like iPads or iPhones or anything. Like I I just don't need stuff that fast. No, and yeah, I like to wait for reviews too because sometimes it's absolute crap. Mm-hmm. 
uh, the iPhone 6 is out. That. And the only thing I wanted to mention, it has a better camera now, but it also, the new version. 4K video. 4K video. You told me that. Which is a big deal for us. And if you get the big one, the iPhone 6 Plus actually is stabilized, uh, like optically stabilized. That's not lady pocket friendly. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't see, not in your tiny little pockets. <laughs> Tell me about Socialite, Socality Barbie. Um, now I'm wondering how to say that. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a funny Instagram account, and they're making fun of hipsters with this Barbie, and I just thought it was really funny. And the photography is pretty good too, but it's also kind of making fun of that Instagrammy, like trying to be meaningful, faux spirituality thing. So she's always just talking about like being a better person and like. Uh, being crowned more authentic and stuff like that, so I thought it was super funny. Yeah, and all <laughs> the, the pictures photos are, really are good. Oh, Barbies, and yeah, they they really are are just perfect. Oh wait, it says it's like we're all competing to make the best computer screensaver, and the winner gets crowned most authentic, which is kind of how you feel in those Instagram posts the when people hashtags. have like their their like coffee and like their beanie and they're like in front of a pine tree and they have plaid on you're just like what the hell does this person like live in an ll bean catalog what's going on i thought it was pretty funny um you know what's great about making fun of hipsters is nobody self-identifies as a hipster <gasps> all hipsters like don't think they're a hipster and they look at other hipsters and they're like oh hipsters are so ridiculous <laughs> so but it's not like hippies like people identified as hippies and Hipsters aren't like that. I think they it's weird because there's themselves. no like true definition of a hipster. So you could be like on the fringe or you could just be, you could be like a parody of a hipster and not even know it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the whole thing is that they don't fit into a group. So that's why they don't identify as hipsters. That's my theory. That's your theory? Yeah. I, you know. Tony, I, I really hate to tell you this, but you're a hipster. <laughs> and I don't know how. I did my how, master's thesis I don't even know psychology. how you would know if I was telling the truth or not. Uh, let's come back to the photo news in just a little bit. I'm going to import some some pictures, some street we photography We got really pictures. good pictures last week, the black and white one. Yeah. I I wish we had time to get through everything. Uh, Siobhan, you have any questions that have come in so far for us? Yeah, just a few. Um, Jerry Johnson wants to know what you guys are drinking. Jerry Johnson. Oh. I love Jerry Johnson. I'm drinking a Pims and ginger ale. Yeah, me too, because I was out of Dogfish Head, and it's not a fancy beer or anything, but I've become kind of a snob. All I had was other beers in there, and I'm like, it's Dogfish Head or nothing. So I went, Wow, cocktail. Tony, whoa, whoa, you've changed. <laughs> what else This episode done? is brought to you by Dogfish Head. Um, street photography, DSLR or mirrorless, prime or zoom lens? Oh, I think there's a lot of flexibility here. I... I think a mirrorless would be nice because it's smaller, so you could be more discreet. Sometimes people, you get a lot of attention if you have a big camera, and a lot of people that aren't photographers think that any small camera means you're not professional, so I think that you could be a little more discreet with mirrorless, but a DSLR would work fine. Um, and as for the lens, I mean like a 50 millimeter, like the Nifty 50 would work fine, but you could really, it depends on your style, you could do whatever you wanted. Yeah, I'm gonna go strong mirrorless. Because, for one, you can look through the viewfinder and set it to black and white, so you can see your world mm. in black and white, which helps. They also often, the later models, have silent shutters. That's really nice, yeah. Which are very discreet. Uh, I don't want to discourage someone with a DSLR from doing it, though. No, but if that's what they were buying back, a camera for, but yeah. I would probably just get uh, like an EM10 or an EM5 Mark II. Um, and yeah, you can do it with a zoom. It doesn't really matter. You don't need the lens, but I think it's such an old school thing. It's, it follows in such a history of, of tradition that it feels like a prime would be right, like a 50 or a 35 millimeter prime yeah. on a full frame. Like a 50. Do you have any more, Siobhan, before we start with this first picture? I can't call this oh. street photography. What? Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to let you know that the poll link doesn't work. Yeah. yeah we, we know. Yeah. But people okay. can just comment. <laughs> We, we just, I asked the question and then I n didn't set up the poll, so that's my fault. But people can just comment and maybe you can just keep a, keep track of what people are saying. Oh shoot, what was the question? Um, the worst kind of photographer to shoot with. Like someone that talks <laughs> too much or brings too much gear or doesn't bring snacks, so. Fair enough. <laughs> doesn't bring snacks. Tony. So you consider the street photography, huh? Yeah, I think so. It's an unusual angle, but I think it's capturing 
I think it's capturing like the life. I think. I think yeah. that it's candid, and and I love the light. And I don't know. I like yeah. it. Okay, I, I like it too. I, I love the shadows, and I do like the wide angle. I'd probably call it travel photography rather than street photography, but it's not like it violates the definition of it. No, it just isn't. it's fine. Marrakesh. Yeah, I, I I like this this photo. Uh, they set up a symmetrical shot, and then they waited for a subject to walk into the frame, and it tells a little bit of a story. Uh, you you're right. I think adding a little bit of detail. So Chelsea's going in there with a brush to increase the exposure of there's uh, nothing in there the, the dark clothes and I think there's yeah they've, they've dropped the blacks too much we can't recover it but they certainly could with the the raw file oh uh, <laughs> that doesn't really I help. found the universe <laughs> yeah I can't get it but you could wow that looks terrible I'm sorry for yeah. doing that to you but we so like it in. oh we're in a brush stop ah I ruined it <laughs> This is really cool. Go up. I'm just go to fit. fit. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I I love the how long is that shutter speed? A little bit slow. So you got the blur. Yeah. It took the distractions out of the background. It adds movement. It a tells a whole cool story. Shot. I'm gonna give this five stars, and I'm just gonna see. I think that there's white in this picture. I'm just gonna see if I could brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, they have plenty of white in there. I'm looking at his face right now, and his face, I think, is the subject of the photo, and isn't maybe giving that one a pick. Maybe could use. I like that a lot. Be a little bit more exposed, let's say. Yeah, and I think this is just a cool shot because of the long exposure. Really it cool. makes it kind of unusual, but it has a little bit of a story in there, and I think that's the most important part of street photography. So, it's a picture of a street, but I wouldn't call that street photography. Uh, yeah, I I guess so because I love Dell's lemonade, so I'm down with it. Yeah, I was gonna say the colors in this were so. This butt distracting. is jumping out at me. <laughs> so I, I like the idea of desaturating that to to black and white. This is rough because the light is rough, and you don't want the skin to be too um, like muddy looking. I'm kind of struggling with the colors here. Do you see how there's not a lot of contrast? Like their skin is the same color as the pavement. It's the same tone. Yeah. And or shade. What it, would you call it? Something about the photo, it, it doesn't tell me anything about where they are. Yeah. All I can tell is that it's not cold. So So it's a hot day. With, with street photography, I think the my favorite technique is to start with a nice location. You can even pick a spot and an angle and and then just camp out there yeah. and wait for the right person to come along. This just feels like a picture of girls sitting on a curb, but I don't know where it is. I don't know anything about the story. And yeah, what's the story that the it's story, telling? It, it, the story just isn't compelling to me. It's, you know, five uh, late night, late teen, early 20s girls just chatting. But and these are the good things that they have. They found people doing something. And there is some story, like you know that they're together and they're having a good time. But I would say for some more constructive criticism, try to put it in context a little bit more. Yeah. And maybe even remove some of the details, like maybe even just zooming in would help a little bit, cropping it a little bit, um, just to get rid of some of the distractions. But you're definitely, you're going in the right direction. I'm gonna, that's a cool picture, but I'm gonna say, that's not street photography. Yeah, there's no real story to it. I think yeah. that's what's most compelling. And and for this too, you know, you there's like I think there's like a parade or something. Yeah, but, but I'm not there's sure. There's no eye contact from the horse. I don't really. But you do have an interesting crop and I an like interesting the composition. composition. Of it. Yeah. yeah. This isn't street photography. Whoa! This yeah, is the last really shot really awesome. Um, this is. This, this is a fantastic. What example is wrong with this that, child? Why is everyone scared of it? Uh, so th this is doing what street photography should do, which is yeah. make you explore it further, make you yeah. think about what's going on, uh, tell you a little bit about what's going on. And, and I can only guess that this is like a concert. This uh, is crazy because we always talk about a background being too cluttered, and there's so much going on in this picture, but it almost adds to the fact that there's like so alone and in the middle of the circle. Like it works. Yeah, the photographer has made 
some conscious choices here in the post-processing that really improve it. So they've desaturated the image. Yeah. They didn't go black and white. They went sepia. Uh, but that removes all the distracting colors. And they've added a heavy vignette, which pulls your eyes in to the center. To the center. And they've, you know, there aren't people cluttered around the kid. There's empty negative space around the kid, so it's con he or she is contrasting with the background. If you were to give us five stars, it just really pops out. I, I think I gave it a pick, but it, it definitely deserves it. The shot, it's great, is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, this one's sad but good. Yeah, not really a street. This is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a good example of street photography. Um, yeah, that's I a great example. I think I might even set her apart from the background a little bit more. I, I was thinking that too. Yeah, just darken the background a little bit. I wish I had my Wacom tablet. Yeah, so we're, what we're kind of doing is adjusting the visual weight of the distracting components. And you don't want to isolate her from the background. You want that context. You even want those people back there. Uh, but by reducing the contrast, by reducing the brightness of those, it would help. Another way to do that would be to, you know, blur it out a little bit more by using a lower f-stop number, for example. Uh, but this is another way to do it too. And you can even go through, and you can even add. You can um, up the contrast interface. Is yeah. What you're talking now about? I'm putting a little more light on her. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, you can up the contrast as well. <laughs> and then that way there, here you can see that she's fighting with the attention of the background a little bit and the tones are very similar. And here you get this light hitting her and she's popping off of the background. So she's really like strongly the subject. I did a pretty sloppy job, but I think you know what I'm saying. And I love that, so I'm going to give that five stars. We got a lot of great pictures so far. Oh my gosh, this is someone's cool dad. <laughs> okay. I think that guy has kids, huh? Tony, um, <laughs> this definitely tells a story. Let's try to. Yeah, I, I was pondering that too. I mean, the colors are really interesting in the shot. I think it works really well in black and white too. Um, but I think it's definitely a compelling shot. I was drawn into it right away. Yeah. I like the composition. The low angle pointing up helped yeah, to reduce the number of distractions by using the sky as a background. So what happened? They had a good sky that day. That helps. Yeah, that's cool. I like that shot. This is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a funny shot. His expression is funny. We have these huge There's great colors. figures in the background. Yeah, I like that shot a lot. I, I don't have any suggestions for it. I just like it. <laughs> this guy does not want his picture taken. Yeah, it's not really a candid shot. He's annoyed. I hope you threw him a couple of bucks for taking his picture. That's kind of standard practice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it do doesn't feel candid to me. Um, I think it still counts and works, though. So eye contact isn't bad. Yeah. This is a really... I, this picture has beautiful colors and light. I'm wondering if it would look good in black and white. Yeah, I, I was pondering it, too. I do like this one. I think that her orange shirt makes her visible. I like it. Cool. This is like a slice of life. It's kind of a little bit more about the street because there's not one person sticking out. There's not one story. There's like a broad yeah, the, story, like they're all going somewhere, but. The, the crosswalks are interesting, but you're right. There's not a uh, what's this person doing. There's nothing yeah. that the, the person, the people aren't what grabs your eye. Yeah. But it is an interesting shot. So it's not that it's a good shot. It's just questionable about whether you'd call it street photography. This is a little better because my I immediately thought, oh, he's just walking, walking home after night. night, and the composition of the picture itself is really nice. The street is beautiful. Looks like it rained because you have all those reflections in the, the yeah. street. Best time to go out in a city for street photography or any sort of photography is after the rain. Yeah. Because you get those reflections from the light at night. It's just, it's cool a, picture, a though. Beautiful concept. I'm gonna put this in black and white. And then I'm also going to crop it because he's <coughs> dead center in the frame. Yeah. I, I like that shadow there. I think that's part of it. Part of what makes it interesting is the geometry 
the lines and the shapes. And then you want to up the contrast and make sure you have some whites. Yeah. Oh, and some blacks. Chelsea's holding on the Alt key to highlight just the parts that are pictures that are peaking. Okay. Interesting photo. This one tells a story. Um. Yeah, I, I do find it interesting because it's almost split down the middle. Yeah. All the the interests are at the edges of the picture. It's almost like two pictures that have been blended together. Yeah. I would I like, like to see. Sure what else to say. I would like to just see what it's it, like to just get one of the stories. Yeah, it is. It is. And kind then of now to you're getting more of the eye contact to me because you're looking at his eyes and seeing that he's looking at this woman. To me, this tells more of a story. But I think the other photo was good, too. Yeah, like I said, I found it interesting because there were just two separate photos crammed into yeah. one almost. But yeah, I like that. These it was are great something photos. unusual. Oh, oh, what I do. I bet this guy is singing. Yeah, if there's a story here, it's that the cop is bored, right? Oh, I think <laughs> that that guy's saying something meaningful. And he's like, mm-hmm. Oh, all right. The color for me is distracting because this guy's so bright. I mean, that's also kind yeah. of a part of the story, but it's all I see is hat and jacket. It, which it might, should be about the faces and the expression. And here but, I yeah. see, like, the lines on his face and the reflection on his glasses and... So I would go for that, and then I'm going to, oops, I expose it a little too much, and then I'll hold down all, and then make sure you have some whites uh, and some blacks. Well, as you finish that up, why don't we pop over to Siobhan for some more questions from readers, and okay. uh, then and we'll then take a look at a portfolio. And then you can go into the oranges, and sometimes it helps to bring out their skin, because sometimes the skin can look a little muddy, so you can go into the oranges and yellows, and sometimes that helps. Okay, Siobhan, <coughs> what up? What up, what up? Uh, you okay? <laughs> how you living? How, how are things in the comments, Siobhan? It sounds like it's been a rough day. No, no, they're fine. There are, there is always some um, confusion when you say things like bring down the blacks. That gets a little touchy. I just want to say, joke since the last show. I really got Tony for some reason. <laughs> um, sorry, that's where my head was at. Let's see. Mm -mm. Oh, people have been asking for some more Ron the Critic. Ron. Yeah. What brought that back? That's like a year and a half old. What yeah. sparked that? <laughs> Memory. I think that they're telepathic because I was thinking about inviting Ron on to do the show for me so I could get a day off. Uh huh. So maybe yeah. they're just reading minds here. Might be a good opportunity for you to vent some pent up hostility. Not me, Ron. <laughs> Ron, yeah. I understand. <laughs> not you. It's definitely not you. It's a dude from Pensacola, Florida. About as far as me, <laughs> for me, you can get. What else, Siobhan? What is your favorite focal length for street photography, 35 or 50 millimeter, and why? I was going to say 35 or 50 millimeters. <laughs> I say I would say 35 because that gives you the chance to crop a little bit. 50 can be a little tight. I like. And this is full frame. I like 50. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's fight. What else, Siobhan? Um. Let's see. What aspect of film photography do you miss the most, and which aspect do you miss the least? Um, Definitely. Only having like 24 or 36 pictures, rolling my own film, which I guess I didn't have to do, but <laughs> I did it. We're going right into the which aspects do you miss the least. Um, How about getting back into the darkroom and realizing you ruined the entire roll of film? How about popping open the back of your camera only to realize that uh, your, the film didn't catch the spool and the whole time you've been taking the pictures it hasn't been winding the film around. But you know what I do miss? Going into the dark room and it just being totally quiet and you like acclimate to that red light and you're just so excited when you put your picture into the developer and you just see it start to appear and that's like really exciting. Yeah, I, I, I love enlargers. 
That's yeah. super fun. That's really fun. I think that seems like a good answer. Let's take a look at w Wadsworth photo. They submitted a Squarespace hosted portfolio. And look how pretty the Squarespace portfolio is with the full it screen interface. It does look interface. really nice. What, what template are they using? I don't know, but I, I do really like this template. So they have kind of an auto browsing thing going on, and they give us a choice here. Tough choice. Landscape, you want to look at landscape or portraits? Landscape. OK. You ever just get tired of people's faces? <laughs> These look great. Great. Yeah, I. Yeah, that one could use some more contrast. I think. Make sure you have lots of whites in there. Uh, I, I feel like this one needs a focal point. Uh, Ooh, let's look nice at the reflections. thumbnails. How many pictures? Okay, so the number of pictures are pretty good. Yeah, good. Not too many pictures. Take a look at their portrait portfolio. These look nice. Yeah, I think there are lots of good shots in here. And some what of these feel that? like senior photos. Like this feels like a senior photo. But it feels like a really good senior photo. I actually like the off-center composition. I feel like the, the portrait work is just solid, right? Uh, I do want to point out, it's rough when you get underneath a guy's chin. And that can be particularly difficult if the guy's a little bit tall. Yeah. So, because I what happens is their chin disappears. It's not the guy's fault. I have to you stand on an apple box because I'm short and I'm f like 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, Most people are taller than me. Yeah. And I'll be shooting up at people all the time, which is not a flattering <laughs> angle. So it's good to either have them sit down or you can stand on something. And I wear a lot of high heels, as people have commented on in our videos. And I also have apple boxes, Tom Cruise style, so that I'm like normal height. Yeah, so yeah, it's usually good to be have the lens at eye level. Yeah. And the lens is actually below your eye level. It's actually so right good for her. It's, it's okay for her, but her chin is still like shows the underside of her chin. Yeah, and but her she neck. needs to stretch. That's not the photographer's Right. So there's a little bit well, they don't know, but the photographer's in charge of the posing too. And yeah, having them kind of turtle their head a little bit, push it out a little turtle bit. Turtle their help. head. Lighting, is that you what can you do say a lot with people? the lighting here. Turtle your head, please. Yeah, well, you know, I say that to people and nobody knows what the hell I'm talking yeah. about, and then you have to do a demonstration. <laughs> um, more top lighting here. Harder lighting here would actually help because the lighting is so even here that it's illuminating the underside of their chin just as well as their face. Sometimes I burn under people's chins in post if I right. can't get them the so turtle. So if you can't do it, then you can do it uh, a little bit in turtle, post. Turtle, turtle. But just be aware of the chin and the neck. So this is a really good example. Uh, you just can't see underneath his chin. It looks much better. You hate under people's chins. This is a great picture. Yeah, that's also a great picture. And here you can see this is hidden in shadow. The lighting is really doing the work here. Uh, and I love that picture, though, the, the crop on the top of his head. I would either go more or less. Um, uh, and it's also clear it's like a great professional shot, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. He's a, a what do you call it? A director? Not a director. A, not a um, dictator. What do you call it? A conductor. A disciplinarian? I think he uses that to hit people. <laughs> Nice, lovely. So I feel like the portrait work is it's where it's at for you. Uh, it's where it's at. But the yeah. landscape is, the landscapes are definitely coming along. You have a good number of photos for everything. Let's uh, find I don't out feel about like you need person. to uh, thin your portfolio at all right you now. You get a great self portrait. Keep shooting. Yeah, you got a picture of yourself, good information. Uh, a lot of your portraits are definitely professional. So at this point, if you want to attract new clients, why not? Why Put not a have pricing a price page. sheet, advertise your location and such. Uh, but you're definitely ready for professional portraiture. Uh, I think it's all looking good. Uh, do you have any feedback for William? William. William Wadsworth. Is that like a famous poet? Um, no, I think it's good. Some of those landscapes I thought would look good in black and white. But you guys know how I am about that, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, so William says, Squarespace was super easy and fast to set up. I sent my clients to the page to look at my portfolio and past projects, and they all tell me how easy the interface is and how quickly it loads. Yeah, on his portfolio, he actually has uh, galleries here. So you can go and look at specific you know, pictures of specific people. 
So I, I actually like the way that's structured because it's not part of his portfolio. He doesn't want to put all these pictures in there. But he had plenty of variety, no duplicate shots in the main portfolio. Really great setup. What if people want their own awesome looking website, Gels? Go to Squarespace. Uh, yeah, go to squarespace.com slash Tony. You get a 14 day free trial, no credit card required. Your pictures will look awesome, full screen interface something? that works on mobile devices. With the free trial, um, you don't have to use your credit card or anything, but you can't share it with people. Yeah. So you can't get that freebie and then think you're going to like show it off and then not use it. You have to actually have a paid one to send the link to people. Yeah, you'd have to like give them your login info, <laughs> which hey, you probably well, wouldn't necessarily hey, want to do. Hey, people cheat the system here. Uh, anyway, if you decide that you like it after your trial, use the coupon code Tony. Use the coupon code Portfolio. Save 10%. Tony. Um, let's take a look at a little bit more photo news. Canon announced it. 50 megapixels. Yeah, they just have a sensor. There's nothing oh. that they're going to do for it for now, and it it probably won't ever. Become... Oh, they just have the sensor. Right, and it's not going to be in a DSLR. That's not their plan. It's for space. It's for, yeah, it's for like space and surveillance, spy stuff. Oh my god. Anyway, it's cool that they managed to do it, but it's not going to be in your next DSLR. They did announce that they're working on a consumer, I think, 120 megapixel sensor. Okay. So the megapixel wars are not over. What is like? Where does this end? And and why? Do you know what I mean? Like, how many megapixels do we need? I have kind of been planning a video around that. Oh, well then, wait. Don't answer now. I yeah, want to see I, charts, I and I want to see graphs. I really don't know. Well, you're going to see actual real-world pictures. I just want to use different meg levels of megapixels and different size prints, the web and such, and see where we can see a difference and where we can't. See when it really matters. I don't actually know. I wanted to plug this website, earthview.com. With Google.com, um, it's it's just kind of a beautiful website. These are taken from Google Earth, so these are just satellite photos. But somebody kind of went through and curated these photos and just found just beautiful angles of the Earth. So these are not carefully composed photos. They're photos taken by a satellite at random. But somebody actually found like these gorgeous compositions, and some of them. Just use uh, you know all these compositional things that we learn about deliberately. Like, look at these lines here. Just mm. beautiful sections of the Earth. There's a little globe down here that tells you. We we get into the in the office with these flat earthers. <laughs> we we end up looking at these evidence videos and we just get super mad because we're all like hobbyist scientists and. I actually um, walked completely around the Earth, so I know it's round. <laughs> Somebody wrote a very angry message to you, Siobhan, because you said something, how you, you made a little joke about something about <coughs> conspiracy theorists, and they lost their mind. Like, they wrote some pretty vulgar stuff to you, and... Uh, I didn't know this. Yeah, I took the comment down, because I don't like to, like... The hate kind of just grows if you leave up stuff like that. But I wanted to tell them that your husband is a conspiracy theorist. You're married to one, so it's okay if you talk smack. <laughs> I don't think it works like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably not. But if you could just roll with it, that'd be great. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> sure. Tony, what do you have with these Zeiss lenses? Uh, Zeiss keeps introducing new lenses. Uh, they introduce this Sorry. whole suite of moderately expensive prime lenses at 21 millimeters, 35, 50, 85, and 100 millimeters. They're fairly high end. Uh, they actually, they look and, and I'm sure, good quality. They they do have beautiful design, don't they? They'd make a great lens mug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's what Work they had. Work on it, Zeiss. The engineers. I'm sure that's what the German like, engineers had in mind. But will it translate to a good lens mug? Those are so hot right now. <laughs> uh, I feel like I have to point out what? that they're uh -huh. all manual focus. And well, I'm sure they're do. super razor sharp, but what do you do if a razor sharp lens is a little bit out of focus? It, the, it completely throws away all the sharpness benefits when you can't get something in focus. So I, I think they just don't have, they haven't figured out the Canon and Nikon. These are for Canon and Nikon. Yeah. They haven't figured out the autofocus system, so they don't have the option. 
Okay. So if, if you're doing videography, I think they become a good option. But then if you're doing videography, maybe you don't need these super high quality lenses because you know even 4K video is only eight megapixels. You can we use a Rokinon lens. We're using a Rokinon lens right now, an 8514, and that Rokinon 8514, <gasps> I think it goes for about 250 bucks. Stop it. And the Milvus here in the middle goes for 1800 dollars. Wow. And I'm not sure, we haven't tested it, but I'm not sure you'd notice the difference for video. You definitely would for high megapixel stills. $4,500? Yeah, so the Dang. Otis here is basically the sharpest lens ever tested by DxO Mark. It's great. But again, it's an 8514, which would be good for portraiture, except that it's manual focus. And it's for DSLRs, so try getting that level of precision, especially I with your high megapixel actually, camera. I can actually, because I'm, this is, I'm a professional. <laughs> and I only shoot prime, and I only use that lens. Right, so. I know. Every time we misfocus with a manual lens, and we imply that manual focus is not as accurate as autofocus, it's because we're not knowledgeable no. photographers, don't according lump, to... Don't lump me into this. Snobs. Okay, speak for yourself. Anyway, so Zeiss now has three series of lenses. The Batisse over there is the low-end series, and it's for the, the Sony E-mount, so just for the Sony mirrorless cameras. And then these two on the, on the right are DSLR lenses, and they're much more expensive. But again, I don't get it. They're manual focus. And with DSLRs, you don't have like good focusing screens. You don't have split prism like we used to in the old days that would help you manually focus. It's just manual focus is real hard. Well, you know, we do it. I do it, and I get through it, so. <laughs> Chit chat, my favorite segment is when we get your comments, and then we meme them with our opinions. <laughs> Steve F. says, notice she smiles for Fuji and frowns for Olympus in the samples. Steve F., I'm not an infomercial. Sometimes I just get bored modeling. Have you ever stood there while someone takes your picture? It's not fun. There's only so much you can think about. <laughs> Sometimes I just think, I'm hungry. When will this end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and those of us who know Chelsea would find this hilarious. hilarious. Because we know yeah. she's not biased towards yeah. Fuji. <laughs> I don't give a <laughs> Let's shit. Just I just want cookies. <laughs> I love people who impose that on me. They're like, she frowned for that. She looks so sad. She's dying. I was just like, I was bored. Or maybe, you know, I just had something to do after that. Robo Chelsea. This is Tony's creation. And uh, David, a smarter man than you with a sloth <laughs> icon, said Chelsea was a Borg, not a robot. Thank you, David. Someone had to defend me. I just, I, I think it's hilarious <laughs> when, when we annoy nerds. I love nerds. What's funnier than trolling a hardcore nerd who has to point out the difference between a cyborg and I, a robot? Uh, clearly you're sad. And he's also annoyed now because you called that a sloth. <laughs> but that's fine. David deserves to be a little, <laughs> little bit annoyed. His name is Sloth in the movie. That's Goonies. Yeah, come on, Tony. Tony, oh, oh my gosh. Right. I'm so, come on, Tony. Sorry I don't know Goonies. My God. We're going to watch it tonight. <laughs> Guess we will. What did he always say, Justin? Candy bar. Oh my God! Rocky it's been Rose? years and years and years. I'm sure you know that. It's not as good as you remember. Siobhan, why do you have to do this? You're probably right. I tried to rewatch Indiana Jones, and that's a children's movie. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a super serious, terrifying movie where a man gets his heart ripped out, and then I rewatched it, and I was like, this is so corny. What is this? And I think everyone my age has that moment when you try to watch the original Star Wars movies. You're like, this was so awesome. I had all the action figures. And then you watch it, and you're like, God, this movie's terrible. Uh-oh. Tony, uh, we're gonna what have sort to, of floodgate did you just what did open? You do, uh, Justin, can we just stop the show and edit that out? Can we just kill off Tony on, on air? Career is over. This is over. There goes my career. Thank you. I've only worked so long for you to ruin it with that comment. Watch that second movie. What's can, it called? Uh, can you just stop? The second one is appalling. This is where you backpedal and then... It's as bad as the second Back to the Future movie. It's worse. Wow. Worse than the second okay. Back to the Future movie. There goes my job. I'm going to go there. Worse than Teen Wolf. <laughs> Teen Wolf. Hi. How do you... Hi. Nipple. Hello from the Philippines. Hi, hi. Everyone says hi, and that guy says nipple. And then Tony says something tells me that Jack Bull Brown is never good at fitting in with his peers. Well, maybe nipple is how you say hi in his language. <laughs> Bikezilla, our crazy friend. If you're out there, Bikezilla, hello. He says, you guys might want to send ninja assassins to wipe out the folks over at Creative Live. They just put up a video to instruct people on how to do spot color. And Tony said, I felt a great disturbance in the force. 
I should have known. I can't believe it. The Force. So That's me trying to win back the nerds. So I put that up. you reference the Force, but then you bring the Force down. <laughs> I just want to say I have a video on spot color. I'm not proud. You can watch it. Yeah, but when you were making the video, you said, I'm going to take them down from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like you were ever on Team Spot Shh. Color. Oh my gosh, you're ruining my life tonight. <laughs> We'll take a look at some more pictures in a sec. Let's take a look at another take portfolio. Which one of these two are you feeling, Charles? Harry Gibbons <laughs> or SDC Photography? I like Harry Gibbons' name, so let's go with Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. Is a Gibbon a monkey? Yeah, it's a type of monkey. That's so cute. Yeah, so his name is actually a thing. Um, there's a lot of options over here on the left. So we're just going to stick with the main thing. I think there might be too many options. Okay. You, uh, you're feeling... This actually feels like a good example of street photography. Yeah, like that's nice. Her eye contact and maybe she's walking with her grandpa. Good eyeliner. Good portrait. Good eye contact. A wedding shot. Good eye. Though, is this a wedding shot? I think this is a wedding shot where there's a pro off to the left and he's jumping in and kind of grabbing a snapshot Whoa, of the scene. Oh my gosh, you were just throwing down the insults tonight. No, I think that's his shot. I think this is his wedding. I mean, it just feels a little off center. Wow. You're being rough tonight. They called me the bully in Periscope. I love this shot. That's beautiful. But I think there was a pro on the other side of her <laughs> doing pro stuff. Good shot, I could use a little more contrast. I like the hill in the background. I think I would just um, like include a little more, just a little bit lower below their chest just to balance it, if that's possible for you. But if you don't, if they're not interacting with a different photographer, then why are they all looking off camera? For boobs. Don't you know the secrets? <laughs> the row machine. I'm that's a fan. A, a really good shot of a gym. I like that. That's a nice gym. My gym has that AstroTurf, but a kid peed on it. This is a nice picture. It reminds me of stock. Yeah, but again, the, the eye contact is a, a little confusing for me because it feels like a traditional portrait, but then she's kind of looking off. Whoa. There we go. Here we have just locked on eye contact. I think it's a great shot. I love the exposure and the contrast of it. I like that shot too, creative color, c colorizing of it. Oh, I love this picture. Yeah, that is Excellent. a great shot. Oh, beautiful light. This is a great picture, too. Yeah, great bouquet. So I, I, I think it's a good picture. I think what we're getting at here is uh, I'm suggesting thinning out the port, port, portfolio a little bit. These are a lot of pictures. Some of these, uh, like this one with the off-center eye contact, it just didn't do it for me. I would also reorganize these pictures a little bit, depending on your goals. But uh, like I thought this was just a great shot that deserved to be higher up. Uh, same with this black and white photo yeah, here. I, I, I would probably picture. lead with those. I like the picture of the guy too with the AG shirt. It's, it reminds me of like high fashion. He had some great pictures in there. Um, I don't know what your goals are for the portfolio, but these are a lot of subcategories and most people who stumble across your portfolio. Let's go to about me. Won't be able to get these. Yeah, maybe, maybe he'll actually tell us. Harry Gibbons takes pride in producing work that exceeds the client's needs. So he's got a, a picture of himself. He looks like um, my nephew. He does have pricing, which is great, and sample photos there. I like that a lot. Uh, yeah. Okay. So he's got an email contact there. He's selling prints because every Squarespace website comes with some sort of store oh, where you can sell prints. This is really they great They actually make picture. it really easy to hook into your bank account, Oh, we loved this, this picture. Too. Remember looking at that? Oh, did we look at that? Yeah, oh. we li liked it. Yeah. These oh, are actually box. great prints. Excellent. And actually, I wish I'd seen some of these in the yeah, portfolio. portfolio. Why were these not in the portfolio? These are excellent. Maybe because, um, like, you know, he's trying to sell his work and he's not going to, like, be able to do this shot professionally. But it is really nice. Yeah, and and all these these pictures are really nice. I would mix these into your portfolio. I think it might even be time just to go through and, you know, some of those pictures should be dropped and some... Some of these pictures should be I have a hard, pulled back hard in. time with the same thing. I go in and I weed out my photos and I never do it enough, so it's 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 difficult to do. Harry um, Gibbons, good good portfolio. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And and I also want to say you wanna just keep the number of menu items to a minimum. So I don't 
think anybody's going to get here and then want to go back to your cover page, so you could just delete that menu item completely. Um, if I were a client and I were coming here and I wanted to see portraits, I just want to see portraits, engagement, wedding, whatever. Do you know? What did I just do? I don't know. It just went black. I have no idea. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. Our monitor just died, but the TV behind us is working. Siobhan, do you have any <laughs> questions for us while I try to fix our monitor? Yes. Oh, here we go. What up? Oh, it came back up. I like Harry uh, Gibbons. We only oh. got like th three answers for the worst type of photographer to shoot with, if you'd like to hear them. I do. Oh, okay. Um, people who want to take boob pics all the time and constantly say, she's hot, click. Ew, people do Sounds that? Sounds like you're taking pictures of the frat boys. <laughs> um, Kyle cute. Wolf says the person he hates shooting with is, is his mom because she always wants him to take pictures of her. <laughs> That's really <laughs> cute and funny, and I love, I love the idea of being with someone that wants to be in every picture. That's funny. <laughs> and then Jim Setzer says the worst photographer to shoot with is the guy who thinks he's Kelby and tells you how to set your camera for every shot. Oh yeah. my god, that's one of the photographers we made fun of. I forget what we called him, the teacher, I think. Well, they don't know this, but we have a video coming out very soon about this very topic, and we will be demonstrating some of the most annoying photographers to shoot with, so shh. And one of them is the teacher, yeah, the guy who just wants to sh show that he's the most knowledgeable person around. Gosh, that is so annoying. Yeah. You know what was really annoying? We went out once and took pictures, and there was the show-off. And I'm trying to take pictures, and this guy is insisting. He was a stranger. I don't even know his name or anything. He was insisting on showing me his portfolio and telling me the story behind every picture. Yeah. And not to be a B-word, but they were really mediocre, and he was saying how great he was and, like, just really bragging. It was so uncomfortable and just so annoying. It was real annoying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He talked to me for like 45 minutes. Oh, I know. When you're out there, you just want to take pictures. Like, I've been looking forward to taking pictures. And I'm like, oh, I'm finally out. I got a night off. And he's and like, I took this thing, one in a puppet museum. And I, this is. You're getting a little specific with <laughs> the examples here. I was wondering <laughs> if you were going to go into the details. Ugh, I don't even care if Puppet Museum guys sees it. He deserves it. <laughs> Harry Gibbon says, I've used Squarespace for over a year now, and I still love how simple it is to use and how easy it is to make changes to the design of the website. We use Squarespace for more than a year, too, and we love it for our portfolios. It makes your pictures look beautiful. It works on all sorts of devices. You can see your analytics and see exactly how far Ooh, people get I love the your analytics. Website. You can see where your views came from. Yeah, and I bet if Harry Gibbons digs into his website uh, analytics, he, he will discover that people don't really get past the first page. They and don't so, get past my first page, and it makes me sad. Yeah, and uh, we actually take the information from the analytics and apply it to the uh, feedback that we provide and that's why we tell people to consolidate stuff because we know people just don't get that deep into it so i just pulled up my portfolio here just to show you how easy it is but and click metrics and then look at traffic overview and you can see exactly how many people have visited my website and how it changes over time so if you do a facebook promotion or if you're trying to get new users you'll be able to see oh you know i did a promotion here and i got a bunch you of can also see where they website. come from so if you go back to metrics, I was looking at this the other day. Maybe it's traffic? No. Probably the refers. Yes. There you go. So direct. So, so oh, Reddit. Oh, so there's a thread about you on Reddit and people there are clicking on your portfolio. So that's interesting to know. Um, DuckDuckGo. So you can see how SLR Lounge. You can see how people are finding out about you, which is also helpful because if you're trying to get the word out there, maybe you see a lot of people are coming in from a forum, you know, that you can kind of put a little more energy and, you know, find out where to get referrals, find out maybe where you could get some business. It's cool. Facebook. See if those Facebook advertisements are working. Man, Google is smoking being in Yahoo, right? Google just in the search engine wars. It's like 57 people. Percent of people coming from Google, 3.8 percent coming from Bing, 2 percent coming from Yahoo. Google just took everything. I can't believe you're not even scared that people are talking about you on Reddit. They're brutal there. Yeah, they Reddit. once said that we seem like we eat people. <laughs> that was an actual like comment about our personal character. Like I put myself out there, and people just think, "Yeah, she eats other humans." I'm like, <laughs> that's reassuring. <laughs> I do, but I didn't think anyone knew. How can they tell? Okay, we did that. 
To be clear, we do not eat people. Let's look at some more <laughs> street photography photos. Um, she is so colorful, but the background is also just so bright and Spot colorful. Spot color. <laughs> Spot color is the answer here. Uh, oh, you are thinking about literally desaturating the rest of it a little bit. Maybe not to the to an extreme, but a little bit, just That's to reduce definitely. the visual weight. Blurring the background oh. could really help here too by shooting with like a fast lens. Yeah. Oh man, we're gonna have to crank the pace up a little bit. Are we? Yeah, it's it's already six o'clock, and I think we started a little late. We could probably get through a few more photos, but uh, I do like the shot though, and and I How, love. Why are you letting me get away with spot color? I don't know why. How am I being blamed for your spot color? Uh, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> You've done something terrible, and it's your own fault. <laughs> I want to see some whites. I don't think they're in here, but let's check. Yeah, this doesn't really tell me a story. What's happening? Um, it's also. I don't know. It, it just it doesn't really grab me. It's an interesting location, mm. but no individual in here pops out at me. There's nothing clear going on. All right, Chelsea, we got to move a little closer right, through these go. pictures. Dudes on bikes. Oh yeah, my gosh, this is big wheels for adults. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess I, I was going to say it feels posed, but no, I don't think so. I think it's actually street photography. I love it. I like it. They're doing something interesting. I love it, and I'm going to give it a P for pick. Whoa, not street photography, no. but very cool. It is a cool picture. I like it. There's dudes with banjos that tells a story. Oh my gosh, she's fabulous. Yeah, this is, it's a it's a beautiful picture. I don't know what is going on here, but I love street disco wedding. I think I would do black and white, but that's just me. Oh, really? I thought the colors were so gorgeous, but I think it works either way. Just a beautiful picture. Nothing here grabs my attention. Just no eye contact. Oh, this is great. I love it. Very cute. Yeah, I like that last picture. There was a an actual bit of a story going on there, a moment that you kind of captured. I like this a lot. He's looking at his grandchild or something. Very cute. This must be Istanbul, Turkey. Remember that bread there? Yeah. That Kebab? Be. Yeah, that's a great shot. I like it. I like the eye contact there. Yeah. We saw, saw that picture. picture already. Um, That's a... That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, I like that. I like this picture. Why? Reasons. <laughs> I like this picture. Chelsea's always been a big fan of rainbows. <laughs> He's got his donut. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> What's funny about that? Just stereotypes. <laughs> They're funny. All right. I would hang out with that guy because I too love donuts. <gasps> That's a nice picture. Yeah, I like that shot. Um, I wish there's, like there was no like a subject. There's no particular focal yeah. point here. Yeah. Whoa, that is very cool. It's a cool spot in the street, but too bad yeah, there's, there's not no a person there person doing something. Person or eye contact. Yeah, hang out at that spot, wait for somebody to come past. I like that picture. Airports are good places to take Ooh. pictures because you have a lot of time. This to is waste. a very awesome picture, but I wish that there was someone in it. Yeah, it just needs a person. The symmetry is great. If there was a person in there kind of throwing everything off like. balance a little bit, it'd be a lot a more compelling. Like. Maybe color. I like color and black and white. I like that pop of color. It's already kind of monotone. Yeah. Very cool. <clears throat> oh, uh. So so here there was no story that popped out of me. Yeah. No well, they're like on a break or something, character. but the eye contact is taking you everywhere. We're like, I look to see where he's looking, and there's really no payoff. I look to see where he's looking, and he's just kind of like spacing out, thinking about... I will say one thing about street what? photography is there you get a lot of misses. You just you, you will take a hundred pictures almost at random, Yeah. and a lot of it is just calling through your pictures. So you just keep shooting. And so it's not like the photographer... Uh, like this, so this picture didn't pop to us, but they just need to go out and take a hundred more pictures. Yeah, and there will be one that pops. Yeah, it just it just takes time, <gasps> like wildlife photography. I love this picture. Yeah, this is a great shot. This is excellent. What a good story. Let's get um, those. But yeah, they you need a little more contrast yeah. to it uh, in the processing. That's the kind of thing you fix in post. But it's a great shot. I love the way they're kind of mir mirroring each other's poses. It's cute. Yeah. Yeah, I think if this one's going to work, it's going to be in black and white. I do like the color over here, but this is interesting. 
I like I like that just one a lot. I'm giving that one a pick because it's sexy the dudes. just juxtaposition of yeah, it. Yeah, I, I like, like that. that a lot. Yeah, that's nice. Not really street photography to me. It's interesting. It looks like Santa. I like that picture. Oh, I really like this picture. Yeah, I like that one too, and I, I like the last one with the the carriage. I'm gonna give this P for pick. It's interesting. There's these mannequins. There's this guy. You know that you're getting a reflection in a store window. Yeah, your your careful study of the picture pays off. Yeah, this is an interesting shot. Cool colors. Yeah, not street, not street photography. photography. Whoa, that's street photography. It's scary. Ah. Oh, I love this. I like this one. Yeah. I, you know what? This breaks rules, but it works. It's uncomfortable. The light is beautiful. I really like it. I just want to try this. Oh, yeah, I, li I, I like it in black and white too. I like, I like it both. both. Ways. I think it's a great shot. I but really it's an like excellent that shot. one. Not on the street, as far as I know. Um, again, yeah, I don't know. Street performers always feels like not quite street photography to me because just. It's not quite slice of life enough. I don't know. Like yeah. maybe if you got because they're like, on the job, like they're working. That's yeah. their job to be in the street. Maybe if they were like counting the money at the end or something that gave you some inside view of their lives. Right. But yeah. I guess it's just it's a little too common of a moment. Yeah. Uh, but this feels like an uncommon moment. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the guy is super old, <laughs> and it's just Hi. it's a cool story, and everybody's watching them, and it seems like a, <laughs> a super fun time. I, I I love that picture. I'm giving it a pick. So delicate. Whoa, great. Yeah. Well, I'm going to draw more attention to the shadow by making it black and white and by bumping up the contrast and making I, the whites brighter. I kind of want to crop it, too, just again to... Draw more attention to him? Yeah, just yeah, pulling in from the Oh, the windows are right. so beautiful, though. Yeah, I'm not sure that the crop is right, but the right thing to do, but... Uh, fantastic shot. I'll give that one a pick if I haven't already. Pick a spot with Terrifying. great shadows like that and wait for somebody to come past. Seagull lady. A again, yeah. though, street performer. Another street picture of a performer. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that, the eye contact. Yeah, this is a really nice composition, Bill Peppa's. We love oh, Bill Peppa. moving car, candid Bill street Peppa. photography. I love the inclusion of the green there. I, I, I can only imagine he did this careful composition through. Uh, good cropping, or yeah. else shooting from a car, he's just really awesome at it. But great shot, Bill. I'd give that a pick. I don't know Chelsea what the story is right. here, but it's interesting. Yeah, it makes you study it a little bit. I like the framing. Yeah, I love the framing of that, It looks too. like you the, found the a good spot really and waited. really busy. Uh, shooting this at f one eight could have helped by blurring the background a little bit. Let's go ahead and go wide open with that, but I like the shot. And so it's a little washed out, and yeah. there's no person that pops out at me. Like, there's no particular subject here. I just see kind of a street scene. It's a cool street, but you know, I don't. There's no story. What's the story here? I don't I know. Have someone riding their bike, but it is a. It's a nice picture. Yeah. Hmm. Um, usually, I don't like statue shots, but this one's really interesting. Yeah, I think it is it's beautiful. A, a good shot. Tony, Looks like this. The, yeah, it's in Austin. Yeah. Is that where we went? Yeah, we got a tour of that. Last time we were in Austin. This is interesting. I'm gonna yeah, put this I like shooting away. into the sun. I like that picture a lot. Yeah. I like the shadows in it. Ooh, a little performer. aqualung going on here. Aqualung? What's that? Jethro Tull. Oh. The world's most famous flautist. Whoa, uh, great. Yeah, beautiful Excellent. shot. I Very love the panning Simpson. on this. It works better in color. All right. Again, there's no eye contact. You know, we're looking at people from behind. Yeah. The the baby picture is a good example of this because it's just instantly more compelling. Uh, same with this another oh. street performer, but yeah, uh, she's looking at stuff. The, the crop's a little tight on that last baby picture. Tells a better story. Like this is interesting. Yeah, I I really like the birds in that picture. I wish we saw a little bit more of the ground. It feels a little uncomfortably cropped, but I love the birds in it. Yeah, I'm even gonna accentuate them more by making the sky brighter. Oh. Let's see if black and white is look. Hmm. Yeah, I 
I don't know, quite know how to articulate it, but there's something that doesn't feel right to me when it's street photography of like a performer or a parade or something. I guess because it doesn't feel that candid when somebody's like doing something that's supposed to be seen. Well, you want to kind of see something that's not supposed to be seen. Yeah, but I think it's okay. I've seen like Giselle, for example, takes pictures at parades. I don't know, and then like it. So I think that you just have to capture. Um, you have to capture a moment. Yeah, or you're or right. It's hard to put. Maybe your it's at a parade, but it's a candid expression or moment or something that's uh, out of out of the character of the performance. I'm just going to bring up the exposure of this. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so I think there's a shot there. There was just a bunch of other distractions. And I like this one, too. Yeah. Let's... Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a good spot. Oh, my God. He's cute. Yeah, that's a cool hat. <laughs> a good expression, too. Huh. Uh, more about the building than the people, I think. Yeah. This is a cool one. Yeah, I like that one too. A nice slow shutter speed. I don't know why we lost our meta metadata. That's uh, nice. Yeah, that's a really thoughtful picture. I like the dog there. See that one. This one. Going backwards. <laughs> I like this. The people watching. I yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I like having some stuff in the foreground there. It adds a little bit of depth to it. Your eyes go over to them and then where they're looking, so it pops right back. There's an interesting flow to the picture. I do think a little bit of a tighter crop can help it out, but I, I like that picture. Yeah, I'm I like it, it too. The stuff in the foreground completes the okay, story, well. too. Yeah, it lets you know more what's going on. I like how they frame the church in the background between the statue. That's cool. Yeah, not street photography, but... This is a really cool shot too. I, I like the composition here. The use of negative space uh, works great. It tells a really interesting story. Given that one to pick. This is a compelling shot because it's it's an environment that we're not familiar with. It might not be that compelling of a shot if you live there. Yeah. But as Americans, this isn't what our mar markets look like, so it's unusual. For me, I, I, I wish I could see his face to complete the eye contact. Yeah. Because I feel a little shut out of this experience. He's looking at him, but then I don't know why. And I felt like it was out of balance because he's looking down. Yeah. And so my I, my eyes followed his Sorry. gaze downward, which was off the center of the frame. Um, but I like it, yeah. Oh, it's I mean, 610. We have to go kind of rapid fire here. Okay. Uh, interesting. Is like yeah, a food that's, truck that's or a something? cool shot. It's a food car, but you know, Wait, there's no... Wait, is that no the end? I think that was the end. Right? Oh, from our first import. Yeah. Uh, Any other questions, Siobhan? Yeah, what else Questions, got? comments? Sure. Someone wants uh, cityscapes to be a theme one week. Hmm. Oh, okay. That's a good a idea. A lot of people wanted to submit as a street photo, and I told them no. <laughs> um, what is your protocol for shooting street photography? I'm a little shy about street photography. Um, but my usual protocol would be to find what I think is going to be a good setting and then hang out there. Uh, and I'll be discreet with the camera. I'll even hold it at waist level and kind of frame the shot and then just click it as somebody walks past because I don't like to do the thing where you do this. You want to know one of my secrets? What's your secret? I pretend I'm taking a picture of something else and usually people, they'll look and be like, oh, she's pointing a camera at me. And then I'll put the camera down a little bit and look behind them or look around and just pretend I don't see them. And I use my periphery to see something interesting and then pretend I'm not paying attention to them. Because usually people don't think they're interesting enough to have a picture taken of them. So if you can act like you don't care, then you can get that candid. If you want to engage somebody, that then I always meet them with the feeling that I feel about them. So if I see like, um, for example, in Peru, I saw kids that I thought were cute and they had lambs and I approached them. First of all, I wanted to ask their parents, but I also yeah. wanted them to know that I was taking a picture of them because they made me happy. So I was like, oh, hi, oh, they're so cute. And then I got my pictures and I got that reaction and response. So I think it's, I think with a little practice, the most important thing can be either making yourself invisible or learning how to interact with the person, like Humans of New York. You get yeah. great stories out of people, even though they're not completely candid. That's street photography. Um, I would say you have to just go out and pr 
practice and feel what feels natural to you. I generally like to just blend in and be in invisible. Yeah, that, that's my approach too. And I'll also say the smartphone is a great tool for street photography because you can, nobody thinks twice about somebody holding up a smartphone anymore. Whereas if you had a big DSLR, you would definitely get people's attention. They might even feel like their privacy is being invaded. But holding up a smartphone like this, not a big deal. Or a mirrorless. Yeah, anyway, smaller cameras, especially silent cameras, so they don't hear the shutter click, knowing that their picture was taken. They won't yeah. even know that the picture was taken. Uh, just helps them move and <laughs> along instead of bothering you about why did you just take a picture. What I've had a couple of incidents where people are upset. Well, you upset some children. You just like <laughs> kneeled down and took pictures of them, and they actually were like, what the hell is this guy doing? I was like, Tony, stop upsetting the children. Yeah, and as soon as they're aware of you, then it's not a candid picture anymore. And also, you just don't want to bother people. Yeah. That, and it defeats the purpose of street photography. But sometimes you will just bother people, and you have to kind of get over that shyness. What else you got, Siobhan? Uh, gosh, I don't know. Gear. <laughs> Okay. Um, on, why do longer lenses like the 400 millimeter f/5.6 have a minimum f-stop of 32, but my Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter only goes down to f/22? Uh, well, probably diffraction, because the f-stop is not a, a linear measurement of the size. So f. 16 on an 18 millimeter lens is a much smaller physical opening than f16 on a big lens because f-stop is relative to the focal length. That's why there's that slash between f and stop, just like in a fraction, because mm -hmm. it's literally the denominator of a fraction and the numerator is the focal length. So f32 on a big lens is going to be bigger and property of light, photons, photons will actually just bend a little bit as they pass something. And this diffraction just kind of reduces the sharpness of your pictures. So as the opening in the lens gets smaller and smaller, your pictures are going to get blurrier and blurrier. Even if you just shoot at f16 or f32, they will get less and less sharp. So I've that's that that's based on the, the physical size, not the f-stop number, but the physical size of the opening, again, relative to it. So with those wide angle lenses, the small, small opening is going to just be ruining your picture, so you wouldn't want to go any lower than that. I guess that explains it. What else you got? She's cooked. Chelsea, did you see the dog meme that Clanky sent you? No, I, I wish I did. <laughs> Very specific. Tony liked it. It was of a sad dog. Oh, no. I liked it. I, Clanky's dog meme. <laughs> I don't know. Was it on Twitter? We don't know. I have no idea. Who's Clanky? Um, oh, you don't even know Clanky? I Clanky don't. Clanky dog memes. I don't know Clanky. <laughs> I like this picture a lot of street photography. It just, it was a cool shot. I just gave it a little bit of a Oh, crop. yeah. We're just going through I some like of the final pictures. Whoa. I like that I one. I love that shoe shine one. Me too. The shoe shine one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. I like that. <laughs> That guy is just such a good character. Yeah, he is. Does anybody want to hear my shoe shine story? No. Okay. I want to hear the shoe shine story. I've heard it. Come on, Justin. <laughs> Do a wife a solid. Uh, so I was a 22-year-old uh, lifelong resident of Pflugerville, Texas. And I took a, a consulting gig in, uh, on Wall Street, which I'd never really traveled around, certainly never been to a big city like that. It was my first day on the job, and I was all nervous, and I had my <laughs> shit suit from Men's Warehouse, you know, whatever it was the cheapest suit, because I was just broke. And I'm walking into J.P. Morgan on Wall Street, and I'm completely overwhelmed as it is. Uh, while crossing a street, I had somebody in a box truck tell me to get the fuck out of the road, because it's new. <laughs> get the fuck out of the road! <laughs> my first experience in New York City, first morning. And... And there's a shoe shine guy there, just an old guy, and he's hollering out to everybody to come shine their shoes and, shoes, and everybody's walking past him, just ignoring him. And he asked me if I want my shoes shined, and I say, oh, no, thank you. Just like, who's the guy in 30 Rock, the, the rube? Kenneth Parcell. Yeah, Kenny. just, like, yeah, just Kenneth. like Kenneth Parcell. I was just like, like that. No, like, thank you. No, thank you, sir. <laughs> and, and he goes, uh... Your shoes are too shitty to shine anyway. 
<laughs> and you were like, okay. And they were. They were like, they were literally from Payless. <laughs> Everybody else there was wearing like five thousand dollar suits and the shoe and shine guy probably had more money than you. I'm like I was the only one who said something nice to you. I'm like welcome to New York. Yeah, then you got the job and somebody told you to lose your accent because you sounded like an idiot. Yeah, they were actually less polite than that. <laughs> <laughs> New York City. New York, where dreams are born and also die. I love this picture. Oh yeah, that, that was excellent. Go back. Yeah, I, I gave it a pick. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Brighten that up. Good. I'm going to give it five stars. Uh, I love this picture, too. <laughs> just the pig there just really cracks me what up. What you reading? It's all about the pig. Uh, street photography. It's, it's a, I love the, the composition of this picture. I, I can't necessarily call it street photography, but I like it a I lot. Think it counts. Uh, and I like the, the mixed eye cont contact here. I just think the, the picture needs to be smaller. Uh, the juxtaposition between the, the tourists and the locals. I like it a lot. That's some new pictures we have to go through. Can we? Yeah, all right, we're getting pretty close here. Cool. Just kind of flipping through, looking for something in particular that catches my eye. Cool use of framing there. No eye contact, no idea what the story is there. <laughs> Performer. Sleeping eh, people. People sleeping, yeah. Food trucks, no eye contact. This is interesting. There's a story here. People racing through the rain, which we're getting a I ton like of. I like that guy giving a stink eye. She's like, "You suck at drums. Quit." <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> you suck. Go home. I like that. All about reflections. My eye doesn't rest anywhere. No particular focal Whoa. point. If that's in the street. That is super cool. <laughs> I love the sparks. I love the light. Yeah, I like that picture a lot. Whether or not it's street photography, I think it's great. I like this guy. He's like... Yeah, I like that too. You see this a lot in New York City where uh, couples are all dressed up fancy and they just have to walk through the regular street. Yeah. <laughs> so they get to just interact with people. And this guy's not even impressed. No. Yeah, those two look like models. Look at that guy's hair. Oh my gosh. How does he even do that? He has gorgeous hair. Yeah. I like that picture. Yeah, I like He's that picture He's got a really a nice expression. People at a zoo. I like it. No people. It's a cute picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Just the light. Go back expression. to that one. I like the light on it too. And I think that I would just <clears throat> bring it down. Yeah, I do think it deserves a good crop. And that's okay with street photography. But you don't always have time to carefully compose it. You just have to grab I like the that a lot. I'm gonna I like give this that a picture, peak. too. Yeah, it is pick. another street performer, but I like it. I like that, too. <laughs> That's funny. That's it. We Great. did it. Oh Every Thursday at 5, and we're here. Yeah, we Thank are. you to our sponsors, Squarespace. Thank you. Thank you to Siobhan for fielding Siobhan questions. Out of Philly. Thank you to Justin for being here. How's the weather in Philly, Siobhan? Is the world ending there? It has been raining all day. Um, which I'm very grateful for because it has been in the 90s and humid for the past week and a half. We've had similar weather then. It's been miserably hot and humid here, and I was so thankful for the rain. Yeah, but and then today, dry, flash floods and so, stuff. So, so dry. Yeah, yeah like flash scary floods. scary to drive. Because it's so dry that it they can't even penetrate the ground, yeah. so. Cool. Cool conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We will see you all next Thanks, week. Guys. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. That is all.